Hello and welcome to the Sonix Tool Shop. This presentation is meant as an overview of both the required and optional tools to build a Sonix or any other metal aircraft. We highly recommend that you print the list of required tools from the Sonix website and follow along with this presentation using this list. Starting with a brief disclaimer, this presentation is provided for aircraft home builders information only. Sonix Aircraft is not specifically or intentionally endorsing any of the products shown in this presentation, and we recognize there are many alternative ways and alternative tools that you can use in the construction of your own Sonix Aircraft. This presentation is meant to be used only as a reference tool for aircraft home builders around the world. We hope you'll enjoy it. For part two of this three-part Sonix video series, we'll be talking about some of the tools that we consider to be necessities for Sonix aircraft construction that you're able to source at a wide variety of local hardware stores, both big and small, along with many online outlets. Shown in this slide moving from left to right is a small benchtop bandsaw, a one-inch sander, a benchtop drill press, and a small vise. You can scratch build most of the Sonic skins, gussets, plates, and aluminum angles using these tools. We use a six tooth per inch wood cutting blade in our band saws and are sure to keep the blade well lubricated with candle wax. We also use the drill press for as much drilling as we can so the holes are aligned vertically. If you use the file correctly, you will not need a finishing sander. Note that kit builders will use these tools much, much less than a scratch builder. A kit builder will still, however, find these tools useful, especially for updrilling and finishing work. We consider a 3 quarter to 1 horsepower air compressor with a good sized tank and integrated pressure regulator to be an essential tool for your metal aircraft project. You may choose to purchase air drills, which are nice to drill holes with given their high speed, a pneumatic rivet puller for the stainless steel blind rivets, and a wide range of air tools available for other tasks. There are obviously all kinds of different measuring tools available, and I find this is one thing that really comes down to personal preference. Um, as far as essential measuring tools, we would highly recommend two of the carpenter squares, which are the big tools you see at the top in the right angle. Uh, those come very handy for setting up the U-shape, for example, with your fuselage box, making sure everything's square. Also, a smaller right angle square is very useful for all kinds of tasks. Uh, but in terms of essential measuring tools, you need a nice uh, 12 inch ruler or 15 inch rule. Uh, you also need a nice uh, yardstick or meter stick, depending on what you're working in. Also, some other uh, useful measuring tools in the middle of the page, you see the calipers. We really don't need anything that precise for a Sonics, as well as an angle finder, which just comes in handy for some of the finishing work. A good solid bench mounted vise is one of the most useful tools in the shop. We use ours all the time as a solid second set of hands. All kinds of different clamps are also available. Uh, this is like having a second, third, fourth, and fifth set of hands. Um, the most common clamps that we enjoy, starting with the bottom of uh, this picture, the two at the bottom, are uh, called swivel feet C-clamps, and uh, you see they kind of have a vice grip handle where you can make adjustments and lock them down in place, a very positive way of clamping something. Um, you see another one to the right without the swivel pads on it. Uh, uh, upper right-hand corner, just a standard C-clamp, you'll find those very useful. I'd recommend at least getting a few of those. And uh, the orange uh, bar clamp is very nice for uh, blocking up all kinds of larger items, items that are wider. And then some of the new uh, style clamps at the top, these are the plastic clamps where uh, you can bring up and, and cinch a good amount of pressure and lock them in place. Drill bits. Do not skimp on your drill bits. I've seen a lot of people extend projects by just trying to use drill bits well past their useful life. Um, you'll need quite a few drill bits. Uh, the, most, uh, the most critical sizes are in the lower right hand side of this slide. You see the number 40, which is uh, just over 332nd diameter, a number 30, which is just over 1 8 inch in diameter, and a number 21, which is just over 532nd in diameter. I need a bunch of number 40s, maybe 20, uh, number 30, same number, and then number 21, you can get by with just a few for the solid rivets. 
Um, other kinds of drill bits, you see a step drill, that quarter inch to three eight step drill. Uh, we can supply you a part number for that to be able to uh, step up in the, in the main spar drilling for the main pins. Also see some spade bits that come in handy in the upper left hand side. You actually see a full drill bit assortment. Perhaps no money can be better spent in your shop than on some nice drills. In this picture in the upper left hand side, you have a standard corded electric drill. In the upper right hand side, we have a standard battery powered electric drill. They're getting stronger all the time and holding charges longer. In the lower left hand side, you can see an air drill, which is very nice for its high speed and drilling uh, holes at a rapid rate. And in the lower right hand side, you see a nice right angle attachment for an electric drill. Uh, that right angle attachment is nice for getting into the tight spots. In this picture, I would say at the very least, an, a nice electric drill and uh, a nice battery powered drill are essential and the uh, pneumatic powered drill is a nice to have. This slide looks familiar. This time we're using it to talk about the bench grinder itself. Uh, this green bench grinder is nice. This is a Harbor Freight tool. It's very affordable and fairly robust. And also uh, what's nice about it is it's nice long reach. You're able to get in with some larger skins, some nice long aluminum angles, be able to do your final finishing work on them. You'll find some very limited uses for a hack saws and pull saws. First on the hack saws, obviously good for a scratch builder who's gonna be doing their own welded components and needs to cut a lot of steel. But uh, for a kit builder, almost completely unnecessary. Uh, on the pull saws, we found these are very useful for cutting fiberglass components. They make very nice clean cuts, are very easy to control, and of course you have other uses for cutting materials around the shop with uh, similar saws. Now for one of the most fun tools to talk about, hammers. On the left hand side you see a mallet. And on the left hand side of that mallet, we have a rubber end, a red rubber end, and on the other side, a yellow plastic side. This is nice just doing for, for doing some gentle persuasion, but also the rubber end works very well if you choose to scratch build and form your own uh, wing ribs and formers. Uh, the center, the ball peen hammer, very nice for just some precision hitting, a little heavier hammer uh, for, again, persuading some hardware or moving some items in place when you have a stack up. And then the two pound sledge, we use this for our uh, bolt and hammer riveting method, uh, which we developed. It's just a manual way of uh, doing your solid riveting without having to invest in all that tooling. There's three types of riveters shown here used to pull blind rivets. Starting with the left is a manual riveter you can purchase at any local hardware store. In the middle is a Blue Harbor Freight blind riveter, which we've had very good experience with. One riveter should last three or more aircraft projects if maintained properly. And on the right hand side is a low profile riveter, which is used to pull rivets in tight spots, only needed in a few places in the Sonics. On the right hand side, you see some of the blind rivets you'll be installing on your Sonics. These come in different lengths depending on the stack up. Be sure you use the correct rivet. Also note that we turn the air pressure down on our pneumatic riveter, which prevents the rivet stem from breaking above the head of the rivet, particularly with flush rivets. A pneumatic riveter is, in my opinion, an essential tool unless you want to look something like Popeye at the end of your project. Definitely do not skimp on markers on your metal aircraft project. You never have enough of them. Right in the center of the page you'll see a blue sharpie, which is what we most commonly use to mark lines and holes. A fine tip black sharpie is nice for finer markings, and the large king size is rarely used in the shop. A very nice feature of metal aircraft construction is that skins become your tooling for aligning the other parts. Note that we use a colored sharpie to mark center lines on substructure so we know when we're drilling on a part rather than blackness, which sometimes means you're missing the structure. Also shown are some awls and hole punches. We very rarely use these to mark holes, but some builders have found them very useful. Every shop needs a nice set of wrenches. This is a standard Craftsman wrench set, which I bought for about $150. It has all the major SAE and metric wrenches required. Uh, mostly the metric you'll use on your engine construction. Obviously, the bulk of the hardware for Sonic's aircraft will be SAE standard. 
While very rarely used on the project, levels certainly are required for certain steps, uh, particularly the leveling of the fuselage for the Sonics, as well as uh, the wing leveling and pre-skinning. Um, on the, the yellow level you see in the, on the top here has a little laser built in. So those of you that want to say you own a laser level, that's great. You can use one. Some builders have used them with success, but we rarely use them. Um, underneath is just a standard carpenter's level, uh, and that's the one we primarily use to make sure structures are flat and straight. Also on the lower right-hand side of the slide, you'll see a plumb bob. You really only use that plumb bob once, and that's when you're projecting a line off the nose of your aircraft uh, for doing your weight and balance. Sawhorses are great things to have around the shop. Uh, you really will only need two sawhorses, um, and again, that would be for the fuselage construction and shown in this slide, uh, the wing leveling procedure. Uh, it's nice to prop up your substructures on these sawhorses and be able to work all the way around, over, through, and uh, under uh, each particular assembly. This concludes this part of the Sonics Tools presentation. We hope you've enjoyed it. For more information on all things Sonics, check the Sonics website regularly at www.sonicsaircraft.com. We also would like to invite you to Oshkosh, Wisconsin for one of our builder's workshops. Check the Sonics website for this upcoming schedule. Enjoy your project, and we hope to see you in the air soon.